We asked Jason Sheff about working with David Foster. Remember, when he joined Chicago, they were already working on their third album with David Foster. Chicago 18. How did that go down? David Foster, uh, uh, is there any other anecdotes you could share with me? Because we're trying to get David, but it's David Foster and he's hard to get. Um, yeah. But we're in contact with him. Um, uh, uh, as far as you, uh, does he work differently than anyone else you've worked with? I mean, well, he's being that he's such an incredible musician, he's and he's said that all the records he's made, he's really played most of the like he's played all the bass, all the keyboards on it. So he just I mean, when when we cut Will You Still Love Me, man, that's like a very intricate, crazy great piano part, very classical, you know classical music you know piano number and three i watched hit. him what's that number three hit buddy right i watched him kind of like just blasting through it to kind of you know learn it so how he wanted to do it they rolled tape and it's one take that piano part i watched him cut top to bottom he didn't fix anything man so to see a guy do that, and that's what was so great about vocally. Again, what was so great about that, that experience was that from that point on, I worked with some producers who think they got to be these, you know, heavy-handed bully kind of guys. I laugh at them and tell them, you don't understand, man. My entrance to this thing was with David Foster, and we had no problem. So you can't scare me, man. So let's relax and get some work done. But I haven't really had any problems with anybody. I've worked with everybody from, from um, Phil Ramone, Keith Olsen, rest in peace, both of those guys. Val Garay, I just did background vocals on Richie Furet's record. Um, and that's why they call me because there's no problem. You know, we just, we motor through this stuff, you know, and there's no politics. And it's like, you know, I'm a gun for hire. And um, Poison. I've done it for everybody, right? And I'll slot right in. You know, I'm going to sound like Brett, you know, on this. And um, so so that experience, again, really fast. I love to work fast, man, you know. Why are you calling me now? You do the 80s. Whoa, I love that. I'm going, that to me is, a Toto did it a lot. Uh, a lot of bands did it a lot. I love it. I don't know why. It was, I remember... Um, uh, Starship did it with one of their last hits and, and, and every single time that just, it gives me goosebumps every single time. I mean, um, not enough. That's the Starship song. Not enough. To, anyway, I can't sing. You're the singer. I'm not. Uh, tell me about that tune. First that song was, that song, Tom Yankton had the title. Why are you calling me now? And the minute he told me the title, it's just the whole picture of it just immediately came into my mind. And so we started talking about a girl that kicked you to the curb. It's not a true story, but it's just a, such a, it just pointed toward that title so much that now she's kind of coming back to just, you know, pretend that, you know, like I'm calling for other reasons, but really the truth of the matter is that she's, she's in trouble or misses you or whatever. And so it really wrote itself. Yankton and I just, you know, we fleshed out the, the music of it. And then I heard the melody of that, of that chorus and sang it to him. And, and um, yeah, it's just a, a, it's kind of, it almost didn't make the album, to tell you the truth. What? Yeah. Because, you know, you what started happened? the album with it, but you start, I mean, you started the album with it. Again, it's like, uh, you know, it's one of those rec one of those songs that kind of come in towards the end, you know, that uh, you've heard of that so many times. Like, uh, if you leave me now, it was an afterthought, right? I think hard to say, I'm sorry. It, it, what kind of man would I be? We're finishing Chicago 19 and the, the, the label and everybody says, we need one more hit. We need more, one more hit single. We're, we're, we're just uh, deficient by one ballad hit. And everybody says, well, what's going on? I said, I, I got this thing I started with Bobby Caldwell. 
And I took what kind of man would I be? And Chaz Sanford just went nuts. He goes, this is great. Is this done? And I said, not quite. He goes, well, let's finish it. So Bobby comes over and me and Chaz and Bobby finished the song. So it's one of those, those afterthoughts. So anyway, what, why are you calling me now? It's the same thing where, well, it, we, we hadn't finished the record and, and said we needed something new. Jay asked me in, in, when we put this together, you know, not quite like producing the record, but obviously a guy with a lot of experience, especially vocally to, you know, to overview, you know, I got zero desire to be the star of the show. I've been the star of the show and been on a lot of, you know, as you know, some big hit records. And so that itch was scratched a long time ago, as we've talked about. I'm at the point now where it's, it's legacy and mentorship, you know, and like, like we're talking, dare I say it, elder, I'm comfortable with that, with that concept of, of helping the next generations and, and taking what, what's, uh, what you've been so blessed with to help, you know? And so we're, we're looking at songs for the record. And I don't know if we talked about, it. I don't think we talked about it in the first part of our interview, no. but, but these, we started the record on what I call Rascal Flatts foul tips. Oh, we, we did. We yes. did talk yeah, about that. That's yeah. right. Cause can, cause Canada. So anyway, we start with, with those songs that, you know, are the best of what was sitting around of what didn't get cut by Rascal Flatts. And then I really was looking at it along with Jay and Jay asked me to do this. You know, he said, you know, really look at what the other guys have so that we make sure we have a great representation of the balance of the sound of this band. And again, and that's what was so great, you know, about all the, the records with Chicago is that we were always looking for a great balance. It was not about this guy's going to run away with all of it, you know, because um, it's, it's diverse when you've got that much personality you want, unless you're an idiot. And that's what was so great coming up in a, in a great organization to realize, no, 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 it's going to be ultimately as great as it can be if you get all of these incredible flavors. And you're, it's going to be obvious if one guy is going to be trying to run off with something. It's like, oh, okay, this is, this is the record. This guy was trying to be the big shot. But I didn't come up that way. I, was, I learned properly, you know. And so... I take that into generation radio to go, okay, Yankton's got these tunes. Great. You know, let's, let's cut those. Chris has got these tunes. We cut these and then we're voting on these songs. And we really had a democratic process, you know, like this is a band and we're all going to vote on songs. And so I had, I really had, why are you calling me now? I had a couple other tunes that re really weren't right for this record, but, um, why are you calling me now is there? And so it didn't get voted into the record. And I'm going, I'm not going to, you know, jump in. Hey, what about me? Right. I'm going, okay. This is totally cool. And then at the last minute, we're kind of going, well, if we, if we go with all of these songs, there's only really one lead vocal or one and a half lead vocals with Jason. That's just not enough. That's what this band is based on is Rascal Flatts Chicago journey identity. So, Maybe we should put "Why Are You Calling Me Now" in there so that Jason has another vocal, right? So, we're, yeah, absolutely. You know, I'm kind of like the like the grandpa now. <laughs> Make sure everything's okay. And sure enough, we started cutting the tune, and people were like, "Wow, man!" And it had all of those elements of uh, of classic AOR, right? And and then once it was done, you know, it was like the record label. I, I don't know. I think it was probably the record label mostly said. That's our first single. Well, part of it, too, is that Dean had gone back to, to Journey. Right. I don't think that would have been the first single if Dean was still in the band. But, you know, the fact that he's really not there, we can't really lead with something that is, is a guy that's really not officially in the band that we'll go out and, and do dates with. So they said, ah, why are you calling me now? It's our first single. But I'm really I, happy with it. I didn't know he could sing till like three years ago. I had no idea. I don't know. Dean? Yeah, I don't know. I, I, like, sometimes I go, do I have a hole in my knowledge? Well, how did I miss this? Like, mother, I father, right? Ooh, mother, father. 
Hope you enjoyed that. If you want to support the channel even more, there's links to Patreon and PayPal in the description and links to Generation Radio, the new Jason Chef project. And there'll be details on how you can pick it up. I'm John Bowden. Make sure you share our videos. If you're a member of a group which talks about Jason or Chicago, please share these videos on there. Comment on them, like our video, subscribe to our channel, and we'd appreciate that. More from Jason Chef in the next few days. I'm John Bowden from Rocky Stream Music.